is up guys welcome back to another war thunder plane review i told you during one of my last live streams that i'll be doing this review of this plane because you guys wanted to see it after i flew it in our realistic as you can see it's here in my realistic lineup uh along with the uh, american nanlis p47d and that is the soviet yak 1b now i'm going to do a little bit of history about this yak the yak 1b i'm pretty sure you can find this on uh, the internet but whatnot but uh as you guys know, I do have uh, an extensive collection of actual military books. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to open up the book. That's the book. And here we go. The Yokolov Yak-1 was a World War, crew, World War II Soviet fighter aircraft. Production began early 1940. Uh, it was a single-seat monoplane with composite structure and wooden wings. Now, bear in mind, the wings on this plane is its biggest weakness. Uh, you will lose your wings pretty goddamn easy. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, uh, multiple wing spurs, but the spurs themselves were made of wood, not uh, uh, aluminum like they are on the British planes and uh, not a steel composite like they are on the Americans, which means in theory you should lose your wings a lot of, uh, uh, very often. So the moment you see one of your wings taking damage, go evasive. Don't bother chasing after your target, go evasive. And most importantly, don't overturn. You could snap that wing off if it's damaged. Now, the first flight of this plane was on the 13th of January, 1940. Its uh, introduction was in 1940, and it re finally retired out of the world's, uh, out of any nation's air, air, air army in 1950. So, for a plane that was built in 1940, it had a 10-year lifespan, which is pretty impressive for World War II technology. Uh, just over 8,712 of these planes were built. Uh, the leading variants off of the Yak-1B uh, which is otherwise known as the Yak 1S, uh, was the Yak 7, the Yak 9, and the Yak 3. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, let's take a look at what the leading variants were. Main armament was 120mm uh, uh, Shivak cannon and one 12.7 uh, Brenzen U UBS machine gun. A one second salvo weight of two kilograms or 4.4 pounds with both cannon uh, with both cannon and a machine gun using high explosive ammunition so there you go guys that's what when we get into it i'm going to swap out the ammo loads if i do have them unlocked do i have them unlocked uh i don't yet so that'll be fun unlocking those so we're just going to be using the default default ammo now of course i've got no eagles right now because i'm poor yeah um but most importantly um its average combat range was 700, 700 kilometers or 435 miles uh its maximum speed was recorded at 592 kilometers an hour with an altitude uh, at, at its flight altitude uh, of 10,000 feet that is bloody amazing uh, um that's uh, 368 miles per hour so uh well, that's that's pretty impressive that that is, I mean, you know, doing three hundred and sixty mile uh, over three hundred and sixty miles per hour is pretty impressive. Uh, let's see, its power plant was a Klimov M ten ten oh five uh, one oh five uh, PF V twelve liquid cooled engine. So uh, again, don't get hit in the uh, the engine. Uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, the Yak one B, the B was an unofficial designation after October nineteen forty two. All Yaks were Yak one S's were built to to this standard a new bubble top canopy a lowered rear fuselage increased armor uh, of course with the shivak uh, cannons and the brenzin uh, ubs machine uh, electric and pneumo uh, pneumonic firing of the weapons installed instead of the uh, mechanical systems uh, new control sticks were based on the measure schmidt bf 109 design so ha 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 i was right uh, during my live stream so i do remember reading something good out of that book uh a new new gun sight designs a uh, new air type fuselage design retractable la uh, uh, retractable tail wheels uh improved engine cooling over the the previous variant of engine uh the first flight of the aircraft was number three five six zero took place in june 1942 while the aircraft entering production of august a total of 4,188 were produced using the Yak-1B or Yak-1S variant. 
Nice. So then the Yak 1M was a Yak 3 prototype with similar wing and reversed co uh, cooling intakes, reduction overall weight, and an upgraded engine. Only two of those were built. So they'll put that will probably be added in as a uh, premium plane. Let's take a look at the armor of the plane. It's mostly in the cockpit and the front glass. So if you go sideways and you're taking shots, you're, you're pretty much toast because there's no armor from the sides. So guys, if you see a Yak... Uh, uh, flying profile, i.e. flying straight. Try and come in from the sides, uh, either sides, uh, or from underneath. Again, you're going to have to cut through a lot of uh, the, the body fuselage, but that shouldn't be that hard, and uh, you'll nail the pilot. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's nice to know. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take her out on a quick test flight. Uh, we're going to use realistic. So we can get a feel for how she uh, takes off, lands, and uh, does a barrel roll. So, setting our flaps for takeoff. Engines at 100%. Cruising down the runway at just shy of 100 miles per hour. We're in the air. Flaps. Gears are up. I'm leaving the nose at its current angle profile, which is a standard takeoff angle. And we are comfortably gaining speed and altitude. So this is a nice shallow, shallow climb. Uh, you can see the uh, holographic gun sight. And you can see that the uh, uh, control stick is, in fact, that a, uh, of a Russian clone of the uh, BF-109. So uh, that's very interesting. We're going to take a look around the cockpit real quick. Okay. Standard instruments. Behind the pilot is the uh, uh, pressurized release for the uh, canopy glass so that he can use uh, the ejector system. Nice, nicely done, nicely done. So we're going to go back now to our regular view. Okay, and we're going to turn around. Now what I want to do is just turn it around slowly. This is a bare basic turn. I'm not pushing the wings. As you can tell, that's why there's no vapor trail. Vapor trail on the, your wingtips, guys, is usually the first sign that you're pushing the wingtips too hard. And that you should really back off. For example, do you see there on the leading e e edge of the wings? There was C right there. See the wingtip? Okay, so rotation is... I wouldn't say it's uh, fast, but I'd say it's on par with uh, most Americans. So 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000. So, no, uh, three, three and a half seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. So, I'd say three, three and a half seconds for a full uh, uh, 360 degree rotation. So, we've got a ground target there. What I tend to do is I tend to want to image that of a, of a Kestrel. Or an eagle, you know, fly up high above my target. And then once I've found the target, throttle back. Nose down. Just glide down slowly. Use the flaps to gain a little bit of control. Now throttle up. Burst. Got the target. Now, I'm going to put that nose in a shallow climb like we did before. And that's pretty much what I do, guys. So, not too bad. Now, let's see how she handles at landing. Oh, there goes my flaps. Damn it. Didn't mean to do that. Wow, we are way away from the runway. Did we lose both flaps or just the one? No, nope, just the one. So if I use my flaps now, my plane's going to pull very heavily to one side. See? As you see, very heavily to one side. So that's not a, that's not a, a bad technique to use if you want to fool uh, an enemy into thinking he's got you. Same as using the white smoke. I tend to use white, grey, or black smoke and my, to let my enemies think that I've... Uh, damaged my uh, controls and I tend to do something similar like this 
which is called the chicken wing wing wiggle okay so we're going to lower the landing gear completely throttle off now come in touch the brakes towel down and break even harder do a little braking wise she doesn't like to stop it seems then again I did come in pretty hard so well, it wasn't too bad notice I didn't use my flaps again that's because the flaps got damaged so you can stop the plane now again my crew is only rank one so it's gonna take a while to get the repairs and whatnot done on this plane so we're gonna head back to the hangar now Here we are, front lines, Africa Canyon. Uh, so we're going to take out the Yak 1B. Uh, 30 minute fuel, 400 meter target sight for the guns. And I like to tend to uh, go a little high and um, tend to hunt bombers uh, in this thing. So we're going to turn tail and start climbing right now. Again, not, not too high, just a nice shallow climb. Let's see, what the enemy, what do they have? They do have a Duo 217, so they, and a GM, a G4M1. So, you know, that that's an AR2, so, and an and a SB2M. So we do have some, some bombers that we can go after. Again, remember what I told you about the, the wingtip vapor, guys? See, you saw it right there, just briefly on the F, leading far edge of the wing. And basically what that is, is uh, you're putting so much uh, uh, air current across the wingtip that it's it's causing moisture to wick away and create a cloud. Hence, that's why it's known as a moisture wick. Uh, so we've got a Corsair going down low. KI-21. Actually, I'm going to go for the KI-21s again. I am a bomber, a bomber hunter. And this is a high altitude fighter, guys. Don't forget, this plane likes to go after high altitude planes. Now, don't forget, always keep an eye on what's down below you. Most of the... Uh, okay, he's got a lightning on his six. So I'm going to go for Shunka 88. We're going to line up on it. He is on a dive. Of course, they always go on a dive. So we've got some minor hits there. Bit of lag. I'm going to break away. See? See? That's right there on the wing. Like I said, right there on the wing. Got to be very careful of the wing, guys. That The wing is going to be their number one target priority on this plane. Now, I am exceeding my speed here. Got to lead the target. You forget you're shooting at a moving target, guys. There you go. Okay, Critter damaged his elevator and one of his engines. If this was a realistic game, he'd be done for. Okay, cannons are out, so I... Oh, I'm on fire. Good shot, good shot. He's aiming... See, he was aiming for the wing. He was aiming... Yep, and of course, the pit... And I'm sorry, I, I, I absolutely hate kill stealers. He fucking saw me on fire, and he purposely went, Oh, easy kill. Pfft. I'm just going to steal all the EXP and credits away from that bomber. Now, we've got an AR-2 running from an IL-2 and a P-38. Why on haven't you dropped him already? Okay, do you saw the, the, the vapor on the tips there, guys? Again. Minor hits. Got to be careful not to knock out the pilot. He's going right for the base. He's actually going for our AAA. So I've got her on a sh shallow high climb. 
Yes, the bomber is pulling away from me, but as you can see, now I'm climbing up and I'm gaining on him because I nose the plane down. Yeah, see, he's going. Now he's turning. He's doing the stupidest thing he's ever done. Again, you don't want to overdo it. Nice, he went for the wing, knocked it out. If you want to drop a bomber quick, guys, go for the engines or go for the wings. Don't bother milking it for EXP. If you're American and you've got, you got plenty of 50 cows, I would say just go spray and pray. Uh, but uh, seeing as how I don't, okay, we've got a low-level T uh, TBD-1. Got to be careful with that Mustang. Uh, cause that Mustang's clearly looking for a, a target. Cannons are now back up. So I'm gonna come down. He's actually doing something rather odd. There we go. Got the pilot and set him on fire. There's a the Mustang. Narrowly avoiding a ram. Uh, the majority of my control surfaces sadly are damaged. So, yeah. I'm going to use the flaps to bring my plane up. And that would be the P-51 trying to get a free kill. Yep. Alright guys, we are back. And this time it looks like we're doing a uh, caucus. And it looks like it's a uh, ground strike, which it is. We're going to start off on the uh, Yak 1B here. Again, she's majority just straight default. Default ammo, default engine, default everything. Basically, this is what you would get straight away. Let's see, they've got an IL 4, KI 102. What else? There's the 102, already lit up. Got a 109 straggler. Coming right for me. Oh no, of course, he's first fucking hit. Right in my goddamn fuel tank. Come on. Put the fucking fire out. No, of course not. Anyway, guys, that was the Yak 1B. What do I think of it? Ah, uh, for its tier, it's meh, honestly. Uh,. Having it fly with other, I mean, the Yak 7B, which is just a, 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 the same plane as the Yak 1B, uh, LA 5, and whatnot, it, it just no, 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 just no. Maybe once I get the upgrades done for it, I'll probably add an addendum to this video. But uh, until then, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, I greatly appreciate it. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, again, it, great, it, it tells me what to do, what not to do for you guys. But most importantly, guys, please leave a comment down below on what you want to see as the next plane review. Um, as suggested on my Facebook group, that's facebook.com slash game, uh, Deceptives Gaming Group. Uh, you guys wanted to see the Boomerangs Mark 1 and the Boomerangs Mark and the Boomerang Mark 2. So expect to see uh, video reviews of both those planes. I'm going to only be flying one. I may fly both of them in the same game. But ultimately, they're just the same plane. Uh, pretty much they are. They're just ultimately the same plane, except for, I believe, one's got the cannons on the f on the leading edge of the wing, I believe. No, 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 the cannons are identical. They're, they're, so, again, guys, expect to see this plane in the next review. Uh, until then, guys, keep your shots flying, keep your enemies dying. Your Cobra Commander is out, and I'll Pouring see you guys around. in the next one, my friends. Of course, the biggest weakness is the upper, ma uh, uh, the upper uh, uh, chassis. 
with it only being 16 millimeters. So you've got to be careful of artillery, even light artillery will will wreck you. You have to be careful of HE as well, because HE will wreck you. Um, this isn't spaced armor, unfortunately. So don't give your opponents your sides if you if you can't you know if you can't help it. Same as the turret. Turret's not really that strong, but it does have some sort of angling to it, 25 degree angling. So you know, unless you're going down the hill with you know.